So yes, I'm going to talk about registers. Uh, so what the heck are registers? So basically, you can think of them like uh, storing text in memory instead of in a file. Uh, if you've ever used a clipboard in your life, uh, then you generally have the basic idea of what a register is, except that in the case of the clipboard, you're actually, anytime you copy into it or cut into it or whatever, you're overwriting what was there before. With registers, because there are multiple registers in BIM, you don't necessarily have to overwrite it every single time. Um, a lot of times, you're actually using registers when you move text around in BIM. Uh, a, lot, a lot of built-in commands automatically write into registers and read from registers. Um, and so you probably are using registers already, even if you don't realize you are. Um, but some have to be named like explicitly if you want to use them. Uh, there are custom registers, which I'll get into in a little bit, uh, that you can write into so that uh, you know you can choose to write into a different register, so you don't necessarily overwrite what's in a different one. Um, they do persist between sessions of VIM, so when you uh, use a register you write into a register, and you close VIM, even though it's internal to VIM and it's theoretically in memory, it actually gets written out into the uh, VIM info file. And this is by default turned on, I believe, if you have no compatible set or if you start with uh, by running VIM instead of VI or something. Uh, certain things automatically turn on no compatible mode for you. So generally speaking, you can just assume that uh, sessions, uh, or I'm sorry, that uh, registers will persist between sessions. So I said that you're probably using registers without realizing it. So I figured I'd take this example, which is a simple four-line function where two of the lines are actually swapped from what they're supposed to be. I actually do, I assign the variable after I use it. So I need to swap these around. So the easiest way to do this is to just delete the line with dd. And you see what happened here is this actually activated two different registers in VIN. These are the two registers up here at the top. You see they both got a copy of that line in. And so then I hit the paste command and the line gets pasted in beneath the cursor. And what it did actually was it read from that first register up there. So it was kind of like an implied read from this register and paste into the file. And because it was copied, we could have also done it this way. We could have pasted it in from either one of those registers. Similarly, we could have deleted into a specific register. Um, we don't necessarily have to just use what they're telling us. But um, because of the way deletion works, and we'll go over differences between the various types of registers, this isn't exactly identical. If we had done, for instance, this double quote, it wouldn't have written both into the double quotes and the uh, number one register there. Um, but if we had uh, actually said right into number one, then yes, it would have So registers, as they are written, I uh, hope you can see that the yeah. text, text is a little uh, hard to read, but it, they're prefixed with double quote uh, characters, uh, unless you're doing scripts or macros, in which case you will actually prefix them with an at sign. Um, generally speaking, when they refer to registers in the VIM documentation, they will prefix them with the quotes. That's just generally how they're referred to. Um, and as you saw on the last slide, to write into a register, to put text into a register, you simply prefix a command that would write into a register, like a delete or a yang slash copy command, uh, with quote to signify you're talking about register, then you name the register, in this particular case this would be the R register, and then D. So we would delete a line and put it into the R register. Here. And how would we use that? It, but in which mode we will use it? Normal? Or Normal. Normal. Uh, you can get to them in uh, insert mode, but um, it's more complicated than this. Because, of course, we just push a double quote character. Right. Double quote. Um, and to read from a register, you basically do the same thing. You prefix with a double quote, you name the register that you want to read from, and then you paste. So in this particular case, we'd be reading out of the G register. So Vim actually, the Vim documentation breaks down the register types because you saw there was the double quotes and then there was the number. Those actually refer to two different kinds of registers. 
VIM breaks them down into 10 groups of registers, and I'm not a huge fan of that particular um, breakdown in the documentation. I think it's kind of more complicated than it needs to be, and I also feel like there's a bit of an overlap. So in my mind, and you're free to say, Stephen's crazy, I don't like the way he organizes them either. Uh, you can use the VIM documentation or come up with your own way of remembering them, but this is how I organize them, which is just into about three groups. And that's the basically the read-write registers that you use all the time for just general copy this text out, move it over here, uh, that sort of thing. These are the ones that you're just generally going to use in your general day-to-day -day, day -day editing. And there are automatic ones. You saw a couple of the automatic ones earlier with the double quote and the uh, register number one. Uh, and there are also manual ones, like you saw the R and the G uh, registers. Those are manual ones. There are registers I would call sort of like magic constants, basically. These are things that reflect a uh, state about Vim itself. So Vim writes into them, you don't write into them. Um, so you can use it to interrogate about the current state of Vim. If you, I mean, you're obviously familiar with Perl. Everybody in the room is a Perl person, uh, or at least has experience with Perl, or whatever. Um, but it has those magic constants, which say like the double underscore file constant, which says what file you're in. Uh, the, uh, the current line is in, and of course the double underscore line constant, which says what line you're on. So they're, they're similar to that idea, basically. And then there are system registers, which normally registers are completely internal to them. The system registers allow you to read and write information from outside, the, the outside of them. So let's just go over real quick what all these different registers are. So we already saw this. This is, I call it the, like the double quote or quote register. Vim calls it the unnamed register. And as you saw, when you delete text or copy text or paste text and you don't specify a register, this is the register that Vim is using. And what actually happens is, in addition to any other place that Vim puts anything into registers, it copies it into here. So this will always wind up being the default, whatever the last thing that was copied or deleted or whatever. Um, so that means like anytime you delete text with any of the deletion commands, or anytime you yank text, a copy will wind up in the unnamed register. Um, and of course this is, uh, oh I already said the paste command, sorry. Um, so basically, this is just the register that you're using when, like, when I said you're using registers, maybe you, even if you don't realize you're using registers, this is really the register you're mostly using. Then there is register zero. We saw register one earlier. Uh, register zero is where, uh, when you copy paste, or uh, when you copy text to paste later, like normally, uh, uh, there's basically two different ways to write into a register. You can either copy into it or you can delete into it. So copying leaves the text in whatever place it was before, obviously. Um, and so anytime you just copy text without uh, specifying a register, it goes into the zero re register. Now, if you actually specify an alternate register location, like for instance the A register, then it won't go into zero. It will still wind up getting copied into the unnamed register because everything gets copied into the unnamed register. Um, but what's kind of weird about this is if you actually specify the unnamed register to either copy or delete into, um, instead of just only writing into the unnamed register, it'll also copy it into here. So this is sort of like the fallback. I kind of feel like maybe Vim just doesn't like to only copy into one register or something. It's very weird. And I wouldn't necessarily advise doing it, but you know, in case you ever, in case you're ever curious about what happens when you write into the unnamed register, that's what happens. So then there was registers one through nine. You saw one earlier, and this is basically the default location for when you delete text that is multiple lines. So, for instance, if you do a dd command, that's going to delete a line plus a line ending, which qualifies close enough for multiple lines. Um, 
anytime you delete, uh, you just write into uh, the register number one, whatever text you just deleted. Unless, of course, you specify an alternate location. So for instance, here I would delete five lines while putting them into register B instead. So instead of going into one, they go into B, and of course the unnamed register. But assuming you don't specify a register, you just delete the text. Um, what happens is actually kind of cool. You delete, and before it puts anything in register one, it moves everything down one register. So what was in register one goes into register two, what was in register two goes into register three, and so on and so forth, until you run out of room at register nine, and whatever was in register nine just kind of goes away. It's no longer in memory anymore. Um, so that kind of functions as a sort of a history of deletions. Like sometimes you might delete one line over here, then you delete one line over there, and you're like, oh wait, I wanted to paste that first line. Well, it's actually still in memory for a little while. So I decided to try and do a little bit of an animation here to just demonstrate what was happening. So we've got our 10 lines here, and say we delete this first one. You see the uh, line 10 got copied into the register number one, as well as the unnamed register. Then we delete again. And line 10 moved down to uh, register 2. Line 9 got put into register 1 and the unnamed register. And if we do this again and again and again, things just kind of keep moving down further and further and further until, of course, we hit the end of the line at, line at register 9. And when we finally delete something else, it just gets pushed out, out into uh, oblivion, basically. So that's kind of cool uh, that you can just sort of refer to various things you've deleted. Uh, without necessarily even intending to, if you don't get it. That's um, curious. Let's say you um, think you want the, the item in register 9 back. Mm -hmm. So you do double quote 9P. Yeah. And then you realize you really wanted the one, no, let's say you wanted the one in 8. So you do uh, quote 8P. Then you say, oh, that wasn't the one I wanted. So you undo. Does that undo does not count as a okay? Version. So you still have one, the one in nine there, which you want in the first place. Uh, Otherwise, if yeah. undo push one in, you get it. You, you right. push the one you want it off. Yeah, off the edge. I, I mean, as far as I know, I actually honestly haven't double checked that, but yeah, I'm gonna pretty come up right sure because right from everything I read in the documentation, it didn't mention anything about undoing the registers. Right. So. Now, I mentioned uh, earlier that the 1 through 9 counts for multi-line. If you actually use a small delete command, which is internal to one line, like the X command, or just deleting one word, or several words at a time, which never really cross word boundaries, or line boundaries, as far as I'm aware, um, at least not without certain settings, uh, those will go into this small delete register. So, uh, and again, you know, if you actually specify a different register, it won't go in here. It'll only go into, for instance, this one will go into the C register and the unnamed register. And certain other exceptions, like uh, to this rule, are possible. Like, for instance, if you delete to the next search result with DN, that even if the next search result is on the same line and it doesn't have like a line feed or anything in it, so you're really only deleting inside of one line, it will actually still go into registers one through nine. Um, I assume that's just because certain commands could theoretically cross line boundaries very easily. So it's just just to maintain consistent behavior, it goes into the large delete register, even if it's considered a small deletion. And the capital N, what does that do? Uh, previous match. Previous. Okay. So this one doesn't interact with one through nine at all, which means, of course, that there is no deletion history for uh, small deletes. So I, if you delete a character and then you delete another character, you can't get the first character back. So I hope that was important to you. Then there are the manual registers, which I've been sort of alluding to this whole time, which is just the registers A through Z. There's obviously uh, 26 of them. <laughs> it, it's, it's using the uh, Latin alphabet or what have you. Um, and these ones are only ever done, uh, only ever written to or read from when you specifically ask for them. There's no automatic from any specific command in the uh, 
uh, any built-in command in there. Which means that what's kind of cool about this is if you don't have, for instance, uh, something like the, uh, I use snip mate. What was the one you used? Emmy. Emmy. Uh, so if you don't have something like that, but you, uh, you have some boilerplate code that you want to put in somewhere, you can select a whole bunch of it. Uh, you can select your boilerplate code, say, uh, do uh, quote B Yang, and then you know B for boilerplate, for instance, and then you know you can go about editing file, uh, editing your file, deleting from wherever, copying whatever. But so long as you never overwrite that uh, B register again, that will stay there forever. So that's kind of cool if you're doing a project that you have to insert something a lot. Um, and of course, they can be used with any of the delete or yank commands, um, as well as the paste command. So, for instance, in these particular cases, I'm putting text into the A through E registers, or in this other case, I'm reading from the F register. We've seen several examples so far of that already. And you might be wondering if they're case sensitive, because of course, I said these are all lowercase a through z. These are they, and they are actually case sensitive, but there still are only 26 registers. Um, what that means, though, is that they behave differently when you write into the capital version of the registers than when uh, you write into the lowercase versions. So the lowercase version uh, behaves like any other register when you write into it, which is just uh, you overwrite the contents of whatever, you delete the contents of A and put new contents in, in this particular but if you do a capital A, what you can do is append to whatever's in there already. And the thing that I think would be particularly cool about this is if you are, for instance, writing a CSS document and you need to, um, and you want to reorganize it or something. So you want to grab several chunks of text and just move them around. Instead of grabbing one chunk and moving it, grabbing another chunk and moving it, grabbing another chunk and moving it, you can grab all three chunks that you want to be together uh, just by continually using this capital A register and then move them all at once. So it's it's kind of cool. It's a, a an edge use case, but it's kind of neat that it's there nonetheless. I find myself sort of moving things around like that a lot when I decide I don't like how to organize my code. <laughs> Happens probably too much. <laughs> uh, then there are these magic registers. Uh, I kind of divide them into sort of the full magic or semi magic. The full magic ones are ones you can't write to at all. Like nothing you can do will write into these registers. Um, except of course, actually just doing general use of things. So for instance, the dot register, you could write into it by, for instance, inserting some new text. But that's like the only way you can do it because it just contains the last inserted text. What is that? A dot. dot. Yeah. Kind of like the dot command. Mm -hmm. And sort of similar to the current file for any time you to a command to uh, search and replace over the whole file. The percent register contains the name of the current file, uh, or the path. Um, the colon register contains the most recent command. So if you, for instance, just saved your file, then it will probably contain the letter W. And then there's this, I, I don't think I'm gonna have time to go over this one because it's complicated. Uh, the expression register allows you allows you to calculate expressions on the fly. So if, for instance, you want to calculate, uh, if you can't remember the number of seconds in an hour, you can calculate 60 times 60 real quick with this register. Just kind of cool. Um, these registers are sort of magical. Uh, they do still function similarly, but you can write into them if you really want to. Uh, the slash register contains the most recent search command. Um, you can't write into it by deleting into it or, yank, or copying into it or whatever, but you can write into it by setting uh, uh, setting the variable in a script. The hash command or hash register contains the last file which you edited, um, and this control this changes the behavior of certain commands. The uh, control caret command or the uh, happy cat I like to call it. Um, I, again, this is another thing that's kind of outside the scope of this presentation to describe what that command does. So, 
flossing. <laughs> um, system registers. Uh, right. So these ones um, allow you to interact with the system outside of them. So the first one uh, is really only for people who use Linux. Um, anybody?